a real privilege also to have him around. So you can ask questions from him uh, about many things. So uh, by introduction, by the way of introduction, I would like to introduce the speaker. Uh, we have Oluwa Sheon David Atepoju. He's a Nigerian writer, speaker, academic, uh, Degrazi, working at the intersection of academic and technology advocacy. He has been working as a digital feature intellectual through foresight design. Oluwa Shen is known for his thought, his thought leadership on African identity and research interest in the digital society, e-government, technology policies and digital philosophies. At a two time, as a two time TEDx speaker, he spoke on TEDx UI in 2017 on technology readiness in Nigeria and at TEDx Mokola in 2017, where he spoke on the topic, may history repeat itself. He is currently a global challenge faculty at the African Leadership University, Kigali, Rwanda. Before joining the university as a member of the faculty, he was the founder and the manager of Tech MIT Africa, a technology and innovation ecosystem advocacy organization in Nigeria. He was featured in the, in the Giz Market It African Technology Trends Trends Counting Report in 2018 as one of the experts working in the technology field in Africa. And he has won the TSL Prize for Technology and Innovation in Southwest Nigeria. In the same year, at the, at the conference, as a conference speaker, he has spoken at Google Business Conference Nigeria, OpenCom Algeria, Meet the Farmers Conference in Rwanda. Uh, step one conference in in South Korea and the African and the first African Entrepreneur Conference at the the Montfort University, uh, Lisetta, United States of America. Oluwa Shen's academic work has been published in internationally reputable journal and is taught leadership life application storytelling content have been read and shared widely across all the continents of the world. So um, here with me, I have uh, Oluwa Shimadepoju. And what he also failed to add to what we have here is that he made first class from this department, Department of Library, Archiver, and Information Studies, a first class graduate, not only at the undergraduate, even at master's level. And he has been doing us proud all over the world. And also, he is a writer, as, as I mentioned. He's a motivational uh, writer. You know, he writes and he posts on Facebook and social, other social media. I'm one of the uh, uh, reader of your of, of your writer. Oluwashi, uh, you have the floor. Over to you. Thank you, Dr. Longe. Uh, that was that was a long introduction. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, and it's my pleasure to be here this afternoon. Um, don't mind if I'm sweating, I'm seated outside. I love the fresh air coming from the sun. Um, it's my pleasure to be back here yeah, and um, I'm glad that we're able to do this on Zoom this time around. The other time, was it 2019? I had to record a video and send to Dr. Longe. Um, so thank you so much for the invitation. Uh, today, um, we're going to be going through design thinking and um, let me share my screen and we get to it. Okay, you, you have the right to share your screen now. Great. So, sorry, I have a lot of things open. Okay, uh, so uh, our topic for today is design thinking in LIS. And I'm going to be streamlining it to LIS because I believe there are a number of opportunities that as young people, uh, we should be looking for in the LIS profession. As Dr. Longe said, I 
graduated from Laris in 20, 2012. And between then and now, um, I've seen a lot of um, opportunities in the LIS profession. Uh, and that is why um, on the side, I do a lot of advocacy for you know, innovation in library and information science. Um, you are, I'm sure you are familiar with um, what you are seeing on the screen. Uh, problem not the finish. And it's one of the most common slogan in Nigeria at the moment. And uh, the picture there shows the frustration um, of an individual with problems. So problem not the finish. And when we talk about design thinking, we are talking about, we are definitely talking about problem. And um, I don't know if I should um, ask you um, the number of problems you have faced today. Uh, just uh, literally the problems and the challenges you've had to deal with today, if I can see that in the chat. What are the problems you faced? You know, it might be from commuting from home to another place, or it might be, you know, anything. What are the problems you face today? I'll read your responses in the chat. What are the problems you face today? Talk to me in the chat. Traffic, okay, traffic congestion. Yeah, that's a popular one. That's a popular one. Any other person? What are the problems you've had to deal with today? Frustrations from vendors in the process of buying and selling, yes. Poor network, trying to connect to Zoom for this class, yes. That's a challenge, especially if you are using an internet that is crawling like a snail. Any other person? I can see frustration from vendors, yes trying to connect to Zoom for this class, poor network, traffic congestion, and I missed other problems that we face every day. There is the power uh, and electricity uh, failure challenge. Um, there's the micro challenge if you, if you take public transport in the battle. So a lot of um, you know, problems that we face day to day, and you cannot do without problems. That is the foundation of what I want to uh, talk about today. You cannot do without problems. In fact, the world thrives on problems. Um, if there were no problems, there would be no uh, deliberate decision to build solutions. And most of the solutions you see in the world today, they are because they are developed because uh, some problems came up. So when there is heavy flooding, people think twice and they begin to design new ways of building their houses, right? they begin to design new ways of building drainage systems. When there is an um, you know, accident at um, you know, um, roundabout and cross lanes, uh, people started designing um, override bridges. You know, so problems are the foundation of what we call solutions today. Without problems, uh, humans, we might not be able to even think innovatively. Sometimes we do not have the premonition to develop solution for problems until the problem shows up. And once the problem shows up, we're able to double down on our intellectual exploration to build solutions for those problems. So um, I want you to know that if you are looking for a problem-free world, then you should go to mass uh, and start. And when you go to mass, you still start your problem there. So problems are part of life. Challenges are part of life. I'm a global challenges faculty, and the idea is to train young people to be able to deal with the, some of the most wicked problems and challenges we face today um, in our world today. So problems, not a finish. It's, it's there every day. Um, you will still face some challenges tonight. Um, power failure. Um, you know, you want to do something. The internet is not connecting. So a lot of problems I will face every day. And this will help you to think about solutions, right? Now, when you look at it very well, there are opportunities and problems. So COVID came, you are unable to go to class physically. Now we're here on Zoom. Um, if you are somebody that is uh, very uh, productivity conscious, one of the best ways to maximize this time uh, studying from home is to be able to do other things while you are studying from home, you know, online learning. You are also able to study in a, with a vast um, uh, area of knowledge that you can touch rather than just going to a physical classroom where once the lecturer finished uh, delivering the class and that is all for you. So there are opportunities and problems. And I want to ask you another question. Tell me the three problems you have identified in like very anxious. From the time you became a student of 
uh, library and information science. What are the problems you've identified in this profession? Type it in the chat. So what are the problems you've identified in librarianship? Because we are going to be talking about design thinking. It's not going to be a long talk. It's going, to, it's going to be short, but I want you to be able to identify problems. What are the problems you've identified in librarianship that you, you really wish that a solution could be provided for those problems or challenges? Let me read in the chat. What are the problems of librarianship in Nigeria as we speak? <clears throat> Let's speak to the place where you're currently studying. I'm expecting your feedback in the chat. What are the problems? Lack of tech savviness of librarians, okay? Lack of access to quality mentorship in the LIS profession, profound. That's a profound problem. <clears throat> We do not have many people like Dr. Alonge that um, is very passionate about young people in the profession. So yes, <clears throat> let me read more. Lack of tech savviness of librarians, I agree with you. Uh, it's been a major problem. And it's also a problem of bridging the technology born generation and the technology adapted generation. More, more, we have more people. We have at least 22 people in this class. I've only seen two comments. I'm expecting more responses. What are the challenges uh, you've identified in the profession? Insufficient current collections. Okay, um, I, I suppose you mean um, recent sources, right? Inability to identify career opportunities in airlines despite the numerous opportunities. That's a profound one as well. That's um, lack of information that can connect you with opportunities. Lack of practical involvement. Uh, Ola, basically, can you clarify what you mean by practical involvement of students of, of, of career pro librarianship, uh, librarians, you know? So I can see inability to identify career opportunities in, in LIS. Okay, um, I've seen that already. On soft skills, poor display of emotional intelligence by librarians, okay? Okay, awesome, awesome. Now that I've read, uh, insufficient information resources. I wouldn't say I wouldn't say there is inf insufficient information resources because um, the world is currently facing what we call information overload. So it's um, I would reframe that to mean the um, the inability of the allies profession um, in Nigeria to be able to you know curate the right set of information. But information is everywhere you know it's it's just about the skills to be able to curate it correctly and find the right information for the right problems okay so um i'll pick the first um so otito jesu said lack of tech savviness of librarians so otito jesu as a librarian in training what are you planning to do to solve this problem you may want to unmute yourself and speak so lack of tech savviness of librarians, that is the first thing you wrote. So that is a problem that you have identified. What are the things you've thought about or what are your plans to um, solve this problem? Otito Jesu. Okay, um, thank you, sir. So um, let me start with the present generation of um, librarians in training. So for instance, we, took a course on software development in 300 level. And um, apparently we did nothing practical except for going to um, Lead City Library and then see how the core software works. So there was no practical experience of how the software is being developed or even um, something as minute as learning Microsoft Excel. We are not being put through some of these things. So everything basically is theoretical. And um, most of the tech savviness come from personal or individual training. So uh, those who are presently in the professional space too, do not have this much exposure. And despite the trainings that have been organized, I, I think they've not really invested much in getting themselves um, 
stepped up in this area. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Otito, just so you've reiterated the problems again. What are you planning to do to solve that problem? If you were to uh, be called upon to solve this problem, uh, what exactly are you going to do to solve this problem of tech savviness of librarians and engineers? Otito Jesu, can you hear me? Okay, uh, it seems we lost Otito there. Let me, uh, there's another uh, um, challenge here, inability to identify career opportunities in allies, despite the numerous opportunities. Bola Jainide. So if you are to solve this problem now, what are you going to do? What are the things you would do to solve this problem? All right, thank you, sir. Um, even being an undergraduate, I've tried as much as possible to, you know, uh, to open my younger colleagues up to the opportunities in LIS. So what do I do? I go to LinkedIn most times. So I spend a lot of time on LinkedIn and Twitter. So mm -hmm. when I go to LinkedIn, I see any opportunity there, or I see people like you, I follow you too on LinkedIn, some of your posts. So I share them to our big family page, that is our departmental page. And mm -hmm. also, there is an organization I know, Library Aid Africa. So mm -hmm. they are they are into they are into uh, allies mentorship and opportunities like that. So I share out information like this to mm -hmm. my uh, younger colleague on our departmental group pages. And also, I try to link them up. Sometimes I tell them go and look at this person's profile on LinkedIn. Follow this mm -hmm. person on Twitter. Check out mm -hmm. their profile. They are also in the allies profession. Sometimes, mm -hmm. um, and another um, instance is that of fake news. I realized mm -hmm. that fake news is something that is an issue that allies can solve properly. So mm -hmm. I try as much as possible to tell my younger ones in the department to, you know, if you can join journalism, join it. It's also part of, it's a bit of uh, um, allies. Let us fight fake news together. Let's mm -hmm. get quality data. Let's get quality information to fight fake news together. So this is how I've contributed to it on my own. Thank answer. you. Thank you, Balaji. And that, that sounds really good to me. Uh, that sounds really good. Um, I've been able to sample your opinions on how to think about problems. You know, we have this um, ability as a people to identify problems. We know how to, we, because we live in problems every day. So we know, we know problems readily. When we, they ask us about problems, we know them, we can list them on our fingers. You can list them problems as you are listening to me. But what is very hard for a lot of people is to think about solutions to those problems. And another problem we have is that we complain so much about problems that we forget that we have the ability to solve some of those problems, even if we, are, even if we cannot solve, solve all of them. So it's very important for you to identify problems, but it's much more important for you to know how to solve problems. Now, there are vast opportunities in solving problems. When you solve problems, you can create a better world. When you solve problems, you can create a better society. When you solve problems, you can save time and create effective and um, um, effective and efficient way of doing things. When you solve a problem, you can actually bring economic wealth to the people. When you solve a problem, you can change the political landscape of a place. So there are vast opportunities in solving problems, and uh, that is what we're going to be talking about. Okay, now I'm speaking to you today about design thinking. And design thinking is about solving problem and going through different iterations to solve the problem, right? Um, it is an innovative way of thinking. It is um, um, a novel way of thinking. And when you look at some of the problems we have in the world today, you cannot solve, um, uh, the reason why it is very hard to some of solve some of those problems is because we were part of those who created the problems as well. So sometimes we just, agree that it's a problem that cannot be solved. But there's a new way of thinking to solve these problems. And um, I'm one of those teachers that rather than define what something is to you, I would rather tell you what the thing can do. So I'm, I'm not expecting you to be asking me what is design thinking, and I'll just give you definition. The, that is your role to go back and actually study what design thinking is definitionally. But in terms of what design thinking can do, this is the design thinking notes and it goes through these different stages for you to solve a problem. So I'm breaking down design thinking for you uh, in a way that you can relate with. 
I'm sure you've read about design thinking severally. It is not art. It is not something you cannot do. It is not something you cannot understand. So think about a problem and think about a creative way of solving it. That is design thinking. And I hope that is really clear. Now, these are the stages you go through when you want to engage in a design thinking process. Number one, you empathize. Number two, you define the problem. Number three, you ideate. Number four, you prototype. And number five, you test. And what do we mean by this? What is empathy? I'm, I'm sure you know um, what is empathy. If you don't know empathy, you know sympathy, right? Empathy is putting yourself in somebody's shoes. That is the uh, simple definition of empathy. When you put yourself in somebody's shoes. Now, when you feel that, when you feel what other person is feeling and you can mirror their expression, their opinions and their hopes, that is empathy. So you you have identified a problem and you want to you you have passion to solve the problem the first stage of design thinking is to put yourself in the position of those who are going through that problem provided you are not experiencing that problem yourself and what do i mean by this many people love children you want to understand children's psychology you want to know what children the pains they go through and you want to solve a problem in that area, or maybe uh, the problem of um, you know teenagers are going through. Maybe you've discovered that teenagers are having it hard talking to their parents and their mentors because uh, you notice that the elderly people usually judge them, and so the teenagers don't have that safe space to speak what they are feeling and what the, uh, the experiences they are having. And that is the problem you want to solve. You cannot solve that problem staying away from teenagers. You need to have teenagers around you. You need to be able to talk to them. You need to be able to empathize with them, put yourself in their shoes rather than judge them, put yourself in their shoes, listen to them and think objectively around how you can solve their problem. That way you are able to provide a, um, a, a, a how do I put it? A solution that is practical, a solution that is uh, permanent, and a solution that is um, realizable. So don't you can't solve a problem you you have not felt, right? You can't uh, provide a solution to a, a pain you have not felt yourself. So uh, empathy is putting yourself in the position of those going through that problem. And in this case, we want you to solve problems in LIS. And I'm glad that you are at the point of empathy to actually understand the problems your uh, the profession is going through. There are, as Otito said, there are issues with um, tech savviness. You know, so you have felt it. You know the pain. You know what it means. Um, there are problems of um, um, you know connecting with opportunities. That is a problem. You are you have identified problems such as young allies graduates going into other things when they graduate um you know from interior decoration to to hairdressing to shoemaking to people going into banking to people going into other forms of entrepreneurship without actually you know innovating entrepreneurially with allies so you may want to ask yourself the question why is this happening and that might be a problem you want to solve and so i'm glad that you are in that position of empathy you are going through it that gives you the opportunity to feel the, the problem you want to provide a solution to. So, and the reason why we do this is to discover people's explicit and implicit needs so that you can meet them through your design solutions. So you can design um, a solution to a problem you have, you have not actually felt or related with. So this is the idea of empathy. And the second stage of uh, design thinking is to define. We waste a lot of investment um, in terms of energy, human resource, and financial resources if we don't define the problem we want to solve properly. You know, defining the problem using a unique, concise reframing of the problem that is grounded in user needs and insight. The reason why many uh, entrepreneurs fail is because they design products for people that don't need it. They design the product before they look for customers. No, it doesn't work that way. You look for the customers, you understand their needs, then you design your product. So it is the other way around. And that is the reason why many entrepreneurial ventures fail. How do you innovate you know, um, in such a way that the product you are building meets the needs of the people you are building it for practically? You need to define the problem. So maybe the problem is that 
uh, the curriculum, um, you know, uh, delivering LI's education needs to be reworked. If that is the problem, you are not going to uh, develop a solution to go and make education policy in Abuja, no. What you want to do is to speak to the curriculums. Your advocacy should be for the curriculums. Your product should, should be for the curriculums, not for the national education policy. Because at that stage, it will still not affect what you are learning in the classroom in UI, in Ilori, in Abuja. So it is important that you define the problem properly using unique, concise reframing of the problem. Sometimes a problem is so big that you need to break it down granularly for you to understand the part of the problem you want to solve. And remember, when we started this class, I said, problem, not the finish. There are problems every day. In fact, the more you create solution, the more problems we create. And that is the cycle of human innovation, right? So it is very important for you to define the problem. Don't be over hasty in solving the problem. You need to understand the problem very well. Maybe the problem is that, um, um, LIS students don't have access to international um, exchange or internship. Maybe you want to now bring internship opportunities to LIS students so that they can even travel to neighboring countries for internship and see how things are being done in other places. If that is what you want to do and you have understood the problem, then you'll be able to say, okay, how do we bring LIS students in Nigeria together? Okay, we can explore them from the different social media rooms they belong to. Then you build an app and then, okay, from the app, you can connect Nigerian LI student to the Kenyan Nigerian um, LI student. And that way you're able to go through the iterations of the uh, problems one by one. And through that, you're optimizing the product you are building to solve the problem. And why do we do this? We're, it's to expose new opportunities by looking at things differently, guide innovation effort, and make sure we've identified something worth working on. There are some problems that are not worth working on because they are, um, they are so big that you need to break them down, right? Um, if the problem, you cannot solve the problem of um, hunger with just giving people water. There's a, there's a stage where they will drink water too and they will be tired and they actually need food. So don't give water for a situation that needs food and don't give uh, food for a situation that needs water. Don't give an app. Don't build an app for a situation that needs a website. And don't build, um, don't make use of a phone for a situation that needs computers. So you must be able to understand the problem properly before you are able to build a product that will solve the, pro uh, the problem. Then the number three stage of design thinking is to ideate. This is the stage that many people are very deficient, you know, because they do not have growth mindset. They, they, they cannot think through properly and they are not innovative in their um, you know, um, understanding of problem. So generating many possible solutions to a problem. So at the ideation stage, this is the stage that is very, very important. When you've understood the problem that you want to solve, then you need to generate solutions. And for one problem, you can generate as many as 10 solutions, and then you are able to optimize the perfect one for the problem. So uh, why do we do this? We generate maximum innovation potential in a short amount of time, and then incorporate different perspectives and build excitement to solve the problem. So ideation is very, very important. And um, anybody can ideate. You need to train your mind to be able to ideate and look for solution. And how do you do this? Rather than complain about problems all the time, once you see a problem, start thinking about the solution. So many of you said there's power issue. Um, and it's, I agree with you, it's one of the biggest societal problems in Nigeria. There's no power. And it's it ampers the, the, the growth and the development of many young people to even, to even be able to do what they love doing, right? So rather than complain about it, some people have thought about how we can harvest electricity from thunder strike. Many people have thought about how, some, somebody thought about solar. Solar was somebody's innovation. Um, hydropower was somebody's innovation. It, was, it came from somebody's idea. And um, while we judge abstraction, you know, what we call abstraction, when you say everything is theoretical, as a matter of fact, the problem with us is not that we teach theories alone. The problem is the way we teach the theory because every tangible product or solution that you see in the society today came from theory. It came from conception 
um, you know, theoretical conception. And then from the theoretical conception, it, go, it went through a lot of iterations for it to become what it became today in terms of practical solutions. So the problem is not teaching theory. The problem is with the way we even th teach the theory. There's a way you can teach theory in such a way that it helps people to go all the way to transform the theory into practical solutions. So this is the stage at which you do your iteration of ideation and look for um, ways you can transform those thoughts into practical solutions, right? Um, so we do this to generate innovation potential, right? Um, if you may want to say, so what is the difference between creativity and innovation? Creativity is thinking about um, solutions, um, while innovation is um, activating the solutions, right? So that's why they go together, creativity and innovation. So when you are a creative person, you think about you know, is at the ideation stage, you think about innovative things to do. Then you have innovated when you have activated or implemented that thing you were thinking about. And it is at this stage you, you do that. Many of you, um, I'm, um, I'm sure you have business ideas. Um, you, you, when you discuss your business idea with somebody, they give you feedback, you now go back to your drawing board and say, oh, I think I was missing it before. What you are simply doing is that you are ideating and you are making your ideation better. Once your idea um, is good and you are able to identify the problem correctly, you can build a great solution that will help the world and help um, our society generally and also your profession. Um, then the last stage is um, to prototype. Now that you know what you want to do and you have ideated, prototyping is creating a concrete embodiment of a concept which becomes a way to test your hypothesis and to get people closer to your final solution. So if you want to build a software for library management, for example, um, and you've gone through all the stages that I've talked about, you are actually going to get to this stage where you prototype. And what, what is prototyping? Something you can show that this my idea works, right? Um, if it's a software, you need to develop the a better version of that software that we can test in local libraries and see how it works, that you can give out to uh, different organizations to try to see that it actually works. And then once we have been able to test and you are able to confirm your hypothesis about that idea, then you are ready to do a full market launch into um, you know, that of that solution. And why do we do this? We do this to gain empathy, to explore, to test and to inspire. So it is important that you understand these different stages of ideation, um, um, you know, prototyping, problem definition, and empathy. If you are able to go through this very well, with that particular problem you have identified, I, I can bet with you that you are going to have an amazing outcome in terms of solution, product, or even an initiative to solve problems in our society and uh, specifically in allies as a profession. Um, I really wish we have a lot, a lot of time for us to go through the different practical problems with the LIS profession that we can begin to work on as a mission individually. And when we talk about uh, design thinking, it is not everything that needs tech because that's another thing that discourages your young people, right? Um, they will say, I'm not tech savvy, so I can't solve a problem. No, it is not everything that needs tech. Even for things that need tech, there are some people who are, you know, designers. They they understand how, how to solve the problem, even though they may not be able to build the technology. That is why in um, design thinking, there is the opportunity of collaboration of different players in the ecosystem from those that have been able to come up with what the design of the product will look like or the solution architectures. So it's very important for you to know that you have a part to play in the design thinking ecosystem and value chain. It is not about, I, I don't know how to code. I don't know how to write. Um, I don't know any programming language. It is not just about tech. There are many problems that we need to solve that we that has no need of tech in quotes, right? There are a lot of problems. There are ideation problems. There are knowledge problems. There are 
mindset problems that needs to be worked on in the allies profession. And I want you to start looking at problems differently from today. And rather than complain about problems, begin to see problems as an opportunity to create a solution and to make on your own contribution or your quota to your society and um, to also build economic freedom. I hope you know that by building solutions, um, you are able to create economic freedom for yourself and for your community. You're able to even create jobs for others. So if you have not been thinking entrepreneurially, um, I think um, I'm encouraging you to start today to think entrepreneurially. Um, if you are thinking about uh, if you think about 10 ways for you to get employed, also think about 20 ways for you to employ somebody. And um, I know many people say, oh, um, it's, it's very hard to do business or to build a product or go the entrepreneurial way. Yes, there was no promise that it's going to be easy. And it's uh, what we call startup or entrepreneurship is about risk taking. You know, most of the big solution companies that you've seen today, um, electric cars, um, even the simple phones that you are using to listen to this class or the computer you are using to uh, connect to this class, all those things were developed by some people and they took risk. The first versions of these things were so poor. They were not perfect, but they, they made them better over time. So uh, it is what you have not started that you can complain. Once you have started it, you see where the loopholes is and you can make it better. So begin to think about problems um, you know, differently from today. And um, you are going to become a very great design thinker. When others are thinking about um, where people are thinking about money, you are thinking about value, you know. And once your value has, has compounded, money will no longer be a problem, you know. So when others are thinking about, I want an internship that will pay me, you are thinking about an internship that will give you the skills to solve the problem you've always been passionate about, right? So think differently. Um, I think one of the biggest issues of our community is that we do not have a lot of people that think innovatively. We don't. We only think we have a lot of shallow thinkers. And that is why when it comes to economic um, prosperity or economic value or even advancement in technology and things that makes life easy in the 21st century, it is just um, in the hands of a few people who are able to think innovatively and create solution um, for those problems. So I want you to think entrepreneurially from today onward in anything you're doing, um, in your course, in normal conversation with your colleagues, think entrepreneurially. What are the economic opportunities? What are the solution opportunities? What are the um, um, you know, societal opportunities that we can tap from this problem? There are opportunities in chaos. Um, I hope you know that some people made more money in this pandemic than ever. Netflix has made more money more than ever in their business because of the pandemic, because people are sitting at home. Zoom, this platform that we are using, they have made more money than ever in the, um, than since they started their business in this pandemic. You know, um, gadget companies have made more money because people need to work from home um, in this pandemic. Furnitures have sold more in this pandemic. So there are opportunities in chaos and there are good, um, you know, there are opportunities in problems and challenges. And that is why I want you to think entrepreneurially to, to uh, have a mission, not just a major. And that is, uh, you know, the description of the program where I teach. Missions are not major. Your major is LIS, but your mission should be to solve a problem in LIS. Thank you for your listening and um, I'll take some questions if you have. Uh, thank you very much uh, for that beautiful presentation. And uh, I believe that uh, my students are so happy and because they are learning from the international experts that have been there and uh, there's no problem you have or they are experiencing now it's what you have experienced when you are here i uh, thank god you did your first degree and your master's there and now you are international now so that's what they can do and get to that level where you are i do i do tell them my mass my first degree was done in ui my master's also was done in ui 
uh, before I got the opportunity to study outside. So that's where they can achieve success if they can follow some of the points you have raised during this presentation. So I want to open the floor. We want them to talk. If you want to speak, you can raise your hand digitally, then or you are mute. You can as well type your comment, then the speaker can read from there. So over to you. Uh, please go ahead. I can see one hand. Go ahead. I please can see. Can. Go ahead, please. Yeah. Yeah. Good afternoon. Please, I would like to know if we can do our masters in website development, coding, artificial intelligence and all other tech things related that is not related to LIS, basically. Oh, yes. Um, you, you have your uh, freedom to pick the area you want to do your master's in. Um, you have the freedom. And the beauty of, the beauty of um, LIS is that um, it's a course that gives you different... <laughs> Mm -hmm. Oh my God, am I? Can you please? Please, please mute yourself if you want me to. Oh, oh okay, okay, I'm sorry. I'm trying. Okay, so you, you, as I was saying, you have the opportunity to pick the area you want to do your postgraduate studies in. Um, but I would advise that it's connected to an area you're passionate about. Um, so, for example, for me, I did uh, my bachelor's in library and information science. I did a master's in library and information science, but I went on to do um, another master's in um, technology policy. So, it's uh, and that connects to what I'm really passionate about. So, you are free to um, do your master's in anything you want, as long as it's consistent with your life's mission and what you want to do in terms of career in the future. And library and information science gives you the opportunity to be able to spread your wings into some of these areas. With a um, uh, bachelor's in library and information science, you can actually apply for- Okay, is that all, Mr. Adekoju? Okay. So, uh, yeah, you can apply for opportunities across all tech areas. Um, that is the beauty of library and information science. Thank you. That's all, Dr. Alonga. Hello. Can I? Okay. Please go ahead. Go ahead, Mayo. Go ahead. Tell us. Tell us your name, please. The first person didn't tell us his name. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Mayo. Yes, sir. Good afternoon. My name is um, Adem Mayo. Or on the live stream. Hey. Hello. Is network okay? Hello. So, we can hear you. We can hear you clearly. I think you can as well. You can as well uh, type your question. Hello. Go ahead, please. We can hear you. Okay. Sir. So um, there are some businesses that we can actually do virtual alone. 
because of trust issues. There are some customers that they have trust issue in accepting customer, um, accepting business that um, that that is only online is because of fraud, all this internet fraud and some other things. And how can we actually do it? Whereby we can only focus, we can only focus on digital. Eva, can you type your question? It seems your your network is poor. You can type your question. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. That answer is incorrect. You are hereby eliminated. How do you say good morning in French? That answer is incorrect. You are hereby eliminated. Yeah, with this, I, I think we, we, we have some challenges with network. And uh, I don't know if you have any question, you can just type your question then before we close for the day. Uh, and again, uh, Mr. Olari Adipoju is always. Yes, apology everyone. We, I noticed even from my hand here, we have very bad network. So can you can you all hear me, please? So we're going to close the meeting yes. now. Yes, we are. We're going to close the meeting. If you have questions, comment, please you can drop it on the telegram. Uh, now I'm going to call on the class rep, uh, Farida, uh, to give a closing remark to appreciate our guest speaker before we leave. Farida, over to you. Um, good afternoon, sir. Just go ahead, Farida. Okay, thank you very much, sir, for sharing your knowledge with us. Really appreciate it. And we hope that you answer all our questions from the Telegram page. Thank you so much for your time, sir. Have a nice day. Okay, thank you very much, Farida, for that closing remark. Uh, well, on behalf of the entire uh, class as well, I want to say thank you once again, uh, Mr. Depoju for we called you and uh, you responded to us. And I must tell you that many of these students, they've been following you. I follow you also, uh, your write-ups, your writings and everything, they are motivating. So we encourage them to follow more and also to learn, not only in terms of motivation, uh, in terms of uh, the career motivation also is the key because I believe many of them want to be like you. you know? So thank you once again, uh, everybody, you are welcome. Just wait on the telegram. There will be a short quiz there for you. Oh, yeah, thank you.